Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. <laughs> That's not true. This is not Ascension Presents. It's Ascent Ascension Presents. So let's start again. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. Here's the thing. I don't like holding babies. I'm just going to say it. I mean, just like, I mean... I, a baby that's maybe a little older, fine. But everyone's like, you know what, newborn. Like, you want to hold the newborn baby? Like, why? Why would I want to hold someone else's baby? Why would I want to hold this baby? I mean, I, hey, listen. I appreciate the fact that every human being, every human being, is made of God's image and likeness. That God loves every human being. Like, right? That, that they, they have incredible value, right? Yes, I can, but I can admire that value from afar. Like, are you because you're nervous about breaking the baby? Like, no, I'm not nervous about breaking the baby. I've held enough babies to know that it's like, oh, this is nice. What do I do now? I mean, that, that's all I have to say. Um, I just wanted to share that with you and uh, get that off my chest. <laughs> but there are some people, of course, there are some people who just, they need to hold the baby. They want to hold the baby. Um, we, have some, uh, we have some people around here who I shared that with, they're like, oh, no. Um, and I'm like, it's okay. I'm fine. When they get a little older and you can do stuff with them, like, you know, like, here, catch the ball or whatever. Even like making faces and smiling back at little babies, love it. That's great. But just to hold the baby, I don't, I'm glad people like to hold babies. I just don't, I don't know if I need to be one of them. Kind of like some people don't like peanut butter. They're weird, but, you know, variety is the spice of life. <laughs> Anyways, speaking of children, it's interesting because we've been kind of talking a little bit about marriage over the last couple weeks in some of these videos. And in fact, you know, I live on a college campus and so I'm doing marriage prep with a lot, a lot of people. One of the things that sometimes people forget is that the point of marriage is children. Now, that, that might be a, a weird statement right now. I mean, actually, it's a really, I think it's a really interesting statement. The point of marriage is children. Now, there, the church has said there are two ends or two goods, uh, two goals of marriage. Uh, the first is the procreation and education of children. The other is the good of the spouses. Okay, so um, <laughs> mutual help, right? Mutual help not just to get through this life, but also to get to eternal life. Wonderful. But the primary end of marriage, this is kind of one of the things that goes all the way back to the very beginning. The primary end of marriage is kids, which need, leads a person to, to have to ask the question, if I'm not ready for children, I might not be ready for marriage. Now, at the same time, I understand there are some reasons, there are some serious reasons that couples need to maybe delay pregnancy, delay uh, having children. But at the same time, at the same time, it is incredibly important for us to understand that the primary end of marriage is not necessarily simply the good of the couple, the good of the spouses, although that's very important. The primary end of marriage is the procreation and education of children. The point of getting married is because we want to raise children. Okay. Why do I need to say this? Well, because I think there used to be a time when children were seen as gifts. And now I don't know if children are always seen as gifts. Again, this is coming from someone who doesn't need to hold the baby. But I love the fact that kids exist, right? I love kids and I love adults. I love people <laughs> in general and people in particular. But I think our culture has departed from the idea of children as gifts. And we've gone to two other extremes. One is that children are curses. One is that children are, are burdens, that, ch that children are unnecessary, and that children are, are to, be, to be avoided, right? Because they're not gifts. They're to be avoided. They're curses. Because what I want, I want to be able to be free to travel. I want to be able to be free to live my own life. I want to be able to be free to pursue my career. I want to be free to do what I want to do. And, or, or even this, you know, some people even say that um, children are a detriment to our environment. And so children are, are, are curses, children are burdens, children are to be avoided. Um, they might be necessary for the prop propagation of the species, but um, you want to avoid them at all costs, almost. I mean, that's a, a certain perception of our culture. But think about this, for years, for centuries, for generations, maybe for all of human history, children were seen as gifts. That, that was, that was what, that's why you got married. We want to get married to, maybe because we love each other, because this has been arranged, but so that you and I, whoever, the, you know, the husband and wife, can have children. That would be a gift. And now here they are as burdens, as a curse, as to be avoided. On the other hand, there's another extreme. And that extreme is from people who have really good hearts. Now, I, 
a lot of people have good hearts. We all have broken hearts. We all have broken hearts, so keep this in mind. We all have broken hearts. We have good hearts that are meant to be good. They're ontologically good, but they're not always whole, right? We're all, we're all wounded. And so rather than seeing children as gifts, they're burdens or curses, or they're rights. They're my, it's my right. And again, this is, this is so painful to talk about because it's almost easier to say, gosh, can you imagine those people who see children as, as curses, children as burdens? That's so, I mean, you can imagine because it's, the children do, they, I mean, they are burdens, let's be honest. You have to sacrifice, it costs you something, costs people something to raise children. But it's harder to talk to someone or to a couple who is saying, like, no, actually we love children. We want children more than anything in the world. And to say, but that's, that's good. But at the same time, they're still gifts. They're not rights. You don't have a right to have a child. Again, again, this is, this is not to say that um, to desire a child is wrong. Not at all. It is to say that my desire always has to be continually, continually reshaped, continually brought back to this place of, I desire a child, I desire children, maybe even many children, but not one of them is my right. Not one of them is, is owed to me. Every child is a gift. I mean, that's the crazy thing. If we keep saying this, if we remind ourselves that every child is a gift, that means that they're not a curse. It also means that they're not my right. I can't assert the right to a gift. And every single child is a gift. Does that make sense? And so again, it's just the mentality, of course, is not, is, is not the, uh, I need to avoid this at all costs. It also has to avoid temptation, the mindset is, I have to get one at all costs. Does that make sense? To keep our minds rooted on the truth that children are gifts means I can neither need to avoid them at all costs and also means I cannot need to acquire them at all costs or get one at all costs because every child is a gift neither a curse nor a right. When we have that mindset, then we're free. I mean, again, it doesn't mean our, <laughs> our, it means that we're free to have our hearts broken. We sometimes, we don't get the thing that we want more than anything. And again, I started this whole video by talking about how I don't need to hold babies. And you'd say, well, Father, uh, so <laughs> easy for you to say, A, because you're a celibate priest and don't, apparently don't want children. Secondly, because you don't even want to hold little babies. You're right. I am in a different situation. At the same time, there are so many things in life that every one of us are tempted to see as curses or as rights when they're simply gifts. I mean, think about this. Every single day, you and I get up and we can either see that new day as a curse, we can see that new day as a right, or we can see that new day as a gift. Meaning, okay, I'm called to pick up this day. Whatever the burden of this day, I'm told to pick it up. At the same time, I can't just demand the fact that like, no, or can, can demand the idea that, oh, this is my right, this is owed to me. I have to see, okay, this day is a gift. So Hannah, in the, first, in the first book of Samuel, she's a wife who wants a child more than anything. She wants a son more than anything. She's weeping in the temple in Shiloh at one point and the prophet Eli or priest Eli sees her weeping and he, ultimately after the conversation, he says, well, you'll have your son. And he prophesies this over her. The next year, she has a son. After he's weaned, his name is Samuel, name of the book after him. After he's weaned, she brings him back to the temple and she says, Samuel was a gift to me. Now I am giving him to the Lord. So Hannah has the right mentality. She wants a child. It's not, he's, not, he's not a curse. But she also doesn't see him as her right. She's able to see Samuel as pure gift. And as pure gift, she's able to receive the gift and then give the gift back to the Lord. Again, this, is, this isn't just about parents. This isn't just about want, parents who want to be parents. This isn't about everyone else. Again, always we need to apply these things, these things to my, our own lives. And I apply this to my own life, not because I want a child, but because there are so many things in my life that I say, well, that's my right, or that's the curse that I need to avoid. But I need to say, no, this is the gift that is being handed over to me. What am I gonna do with it? It's a gift that at some point will, be not, will not be given to me. Okay, what am I going to do then? What am I going to do without it? I think great practice for that is, is for something very, very simple. Something that maybe you're like, this is ridiculous, Father. Why would you even say this? It's called the morning offering. To get up every morning and, and see each day, not as a curse and not every, each day, not as a right, but each day as a gift. You get up and basically pray to the Lord and say, okay, God, I offer you this day. I offer you all the sufferings, the pains, the, the work, the joys of this day for 
the will you have in your heart, Lord, for the betterment of other people, for their conversions, for their getting closer to you. But it, it involves seeing each day, not as a curse and not as a right, but as a gift. And when we do that, we have a heart like the Lord's. Again, this isn't ultimately about children. It's not ultimately about those uh, couples who are in so much pain because I understand the pain. I mean, when I say I understand the pain, of what I'm saying is I understand it as a human being. I don't understand it as a dad who wants, or a man who wants to be a father more than anything. I don't understand it as a woman who wants to be a, a mother more than anything. But I do understand it as a human who I desire so many things that I'm not able to have. But I have to, just like all of us, I have to, we have to, refuse to see these things in our lives either as curses or as rights. But to go back to that place where, where we remember they're not curses, they're not rights, they're gifts. What am I going to do with the gift? And what am I going to do when I'm not given the gift? Because that moment, what I do there, makes all of the difference between a life where I say, God, my will be done, and a life where I say, God, thy will be done. It's a painful moment, but it's a moment that every single one of us have to embrace and enter into. What is our response when we're given the gift? What's our response when the gift is withheld? My will be done, or Father, thy will be done. I'm praying for you because I know this is painful. For all of us here at Ascension Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless. We are in the same boat, even if they're different boats. Make sense? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> God bless.